Wesley Dodds, the Sandman, issue 4, Robert Vendetti writing with Riley Rosmo on the art. Matt is still reading this. In fact, he read issue 3 yeah. last time and didn't tell us, so he never talk talked yeah. about it. So. so the last time, so in, in issue 3, we found out that someone had broken in and stolen all of uh, Wesley's poison gases that were kind of mistakes. Uh, they're not his dream gas. And Oh, no, that was issue 2, because I read that. Right. But yeah. you find out that the the military wants to use those, right? So they they get Wesley mm. in into a meeting, and um, someone has stolen his journal, right? They broke into his house, stole his journal. They have knowledge somehow of his gases, and he's like, "Well, no, I'm not making those. I don't even have the formulas anymore." And the general's kind of like, "Well, what if we did have them?" Um, so at the end of issue three. Uh, the the rogue Sandman, the bad Sandman that broke in, stole his journal uh, and everything, knocks Wesley out with his own gas. And so this issue opens up with uh, a bunch of double page spreads, which made for a very quick read of Wesley, fi- or not finally, but experiencing of what the people experience when he knocks them out. And he starts to feel this dread and, um, and, uh, sense of doom uh and it goes through his history um i'm gonna pull it up and go through because in in rosmo fashion it's kind of chaotic but the chaos works because it's this dreamlike uh state that he's in and so as you kind of follow wesley through the story um you follow these gas lines that rosmo has has put in but um it, it gets into his his history and like uh, feeling bad as a kid for um, stealing from a, a guy selling chocolate, knowing that they could pay for it, right? Um, and then standing by and letting a kid at his school get bullied because he was getting out for his um, – he was getting thrown out of the boarding school because his parents were, weren't were able to pay because they went bankrupt. And uh, Wesley starts to realize that this gas, you know, not only does it show uh, nightmares, but it, it makes him – empathetic and that's where a lot of this bad feelings coming from is like the fact that he can look back at these moments and feel what the people you know what everyone else was feeling at the time um and he says these aren't memories they're empathies uh every offense every hurt i've spoken or committed and it's essentially him just it's one of those things as, as you know someone with anxiety like myself where you end up dwelling on a lot of stupid things that you know for a fact no one else remembers but you end up torturing yourself and it's almost like he's stuck in this state. And, um, as he's remembering all of these things, um, he's following through the page and he's following like this moth, um, that is representative of, of, uh, uh, of the gas that's leading him on the way. Uh, and it ends up, uh, him seeing the past, which he, he sees world war one, you know, which is the, the war that his dad fought in, uh, to the present, which shows him, you know, uh, going on the adventures early on to the future. And we see, you know, zombie Sandman from night terrors, right. Fighting one of the, the, um, what were those stupid things called? Were they the sleepless nights? Something like that. Oh yeah. Sounds right. Yeah. Right. Um, It's not even been that long since that event, but I've already jettisoned that from my brain. (laughs) We're already trying to right? And so he's like, yeah, I have a nightmare beast you know, brought to, to life to a boy made of sand, right? And it shows Sandy. But in in that, his final, you know, when, when we thought Sandy had died where he turned into like a statue, right? Um, to visions that he can't even put words to and it's, it's the nuclear bomb going off. Uh, and then to the JSA, right? And he wonders if he can stop it from happening where finally he ends up waking from the dream. Um, Diane's there, his girlfriend... And she tells him that he's been out for two days. And he's like, oh, my God, in two days, everything can go bad. They they have my you know gas formulas and I got to go stop. Uh, I got to go stop them from putting these in production. I think I know who's behind all of this. And that's where he starts thinking that it was uh, the general, right, who put someone up to this knowing what Wesley had. Um, and they think back to the dead body they had found in, you know, that was essentially the pat, uh, the Patsy in his lab and in his house. And, um, uh, 
he's like, no, that guy was a thug. He's not behind any of this. It's not him. There is a boss. And then it clicks with him that the person who's probably responsible is his dad's friend, Wheeler Vanderlyle. Um, Wheeler, who set up the meeting with the general, the guy that's been getting Wesley onto his feet and kind of encouraging him to to put the stuff into production. So he goes to knock on the door because that's where he's staying right now uh, while his house is being uh, fixed. And he goes to knock on the door. It's locked. He can hear something going on. And he knocks down the door and the the rogue Sandman is there attacking uh, Wheeler. Um, we see him without the mask on and he's missing an eye. Like he has a like an eye patch over it, but it looks fresh. Um, and uh, he knows uh, Dodds. So uh, Wesley grabs a lamp, chucks it at him. Uh, they have a struggle. And this is probably the best Rosmo art that I've seen because you can really follow the action through it in the fight scene. And it does kind of the old timey. Um, there's a smattering of, of panels and they're all at like Dutch angles, but they show each a different part of the fight to finally Wesley ends up kicking this guy through a window by accident because he's gotten too into his, his feelings. And uh, the rogue Sandman tells him, you know, well, look at this pacifist now. Um, and uh, that's what ends up leading him to get kicked out the window is he pulls a knife on Wesley, cuts him. Uh, Wesley pushes forward. Uh, the rogue Sandman ends up landing on a taxi out the window. Uh, and uh, Diane comes running in, worried that he's bleeding. He goes, it, it's fine. It's not deep. Um, he went after Vanderlyle to get to him. Um, because he came asking, uh, this guy came, uh, at demanding answers about Wesley Dodds. Um, and so Wesley tells Diane, you know, um, I, I know what all this is and, you know, in order to figure this out, I'm going to have to commit treason. And then it shows what looks like a POW camp somewhere. Um, and it says, uh, the tease is Sandman versus the U S army. Uh, so yeah, so it it it's seeming to set up what leads Wesley into turning from this pacifist who's just fighting street crime to seeing what the bigger picture is eventually, and it's almost like the dream realm has chosen him, like even before he was ready for it. So this is almost turning into like a almost like a Wesley Dodd's origin story in a way because it's not like yes he's currently active but he's not the superhero that that we associate the you know with him as the character as a member of the jsa mm -hmm. you know so uh venditti's doing real good work it, it definitely hits that uh, you know old school vibe down to the dialogue and which some people might have a problem with because it seems wooden but i feel like he's writing for the time period so it's a lot of when he addresses his girlfriend it's always like oh diane we have to do this and diane i have to so it adds and to she's the like shut up wesley yeah essentially like you need to get control of yourself and, and that was a joke i was i was quoting picard telling wesley crusher to shut up <laughs> really picard told him to shut up he lost his cool that that, yeah there's, a, there's an episode where it says wow. shut up wesley is uh you, i'm sure you can wow. find a gif or a clip of it yeah if you really want wow. to but yeah so very very solid book and again this is the most i've enjoyed rosmo's art and, and it's not for everybody however for Venditti, it seems like he reins himself in because I feel like there's a camaraderie to tell this story that's set in a different era. So he doesn't, you know, there's not a lot of the, you know, because sometimes I feel like his artwork looks like a caricature, like his Harley Quinn book. You would look at some of that stuff and you're like, I get that's supposed to be Harley, but it's just off enough here. When he draws the Justice Society, they're all instantly recognizable. Hmm. right so uh and just the the fight scene with the rogue sandman just it looked really good and there was a pop to it that i don't usually associate with rosmo so uh yeah i'm, I'm glad i i kept this going and, it, and again it, it added to this morning i thought i would read it and fall back asleep right that's <laughs> how i ended up as i was up and uh sandman did not put me out so uh here we are uh, so uh, I, will, I will give this a 7.5.